Right, well, so to disappoint, but this is a Nintendo Switch. And it's in for... Doesn't say. So I'm going to have to find it on the computer. It's not printed proper, but it's... It's been sent with everything. All the accessories. So let me just find it on the computer. Water damage. Hopefully, I like water damage. You watch it be a dead CPU. <laughs> Ooh, charger port's damaged. Hang on. Let me just inspect this. Just see what we're dealing with before I plug it in. Yeah, port's damaged. Alright, so we've got a damaged port. That's not damaged enough to kill the... CPU or anything now. Okay, so we're stuck on 5 amp. Uh, 5 volts. Nothing at all that side. This is going to have damage traces. 5 volts, 90 milliamps. That's usually going to be either USB detect isn't working properly because of the port, or it's going to be M92s become damaged as well, or that the traces are damaged. But I think this might have damaged traces because it's not being recognised on one side of the port. Might have been dropped, yeah. Could have been. Almost exclusive with fixed inverters. I love the way they're built. Nice. I've never worked on one. P13s is not charging both ways. It could be P13, could be M92. Have you put your prices up due to the cost of electricity? Slightly, yes. I have slightly, yes. I've added like a fiver onto each job, which I think is fair. This board's in really good condition. This is an exploitable board. It's a HIC CPU 10, and it's in pretty darn good condition. Considering, hmm, right, let's just do a few tests, shall we? Right, let's use the new multimeter. How much is a mod each switch worth? Not a lot, no one really buys them anymore. Right, so we're in diode mode, yep, that's working. So, red probe on ground. I'm gonna check this cap down here. And yep, we don't have a dead CPU, that's good. 0.32, okay. And we have a short on that cap there, so M92 is short. And that cap there as well, yep. So that's going to explain why we're not getting USB charging on one side, and also why we're stuck on 5 volts. So in diode mode, you can tell it's short if it goes down to zero or close to zero, like that. So 0 0.031. Uh, what about P13 USB? P13 USB checks out. It's pointless carrying on checking these, to be honest. Um, yeah, so we've got a shorted M92 T36 and also a bad charge port as well. Right, so, I'm going to do this from over the edge of the board, just like I do HDMI ports. Right, that's loose, I'll give it another five seconds. Cool. Right, let's replace with leaded solder. Do, 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 do. There we go. 
And just like with the HDMI port, let's use the heat and drop method. I'm going to drop down to 440 Celsius though, at 40% airflow. We're reinstalling a new port. Um, expecting our solder to suck up into the board any second now. I said any second now. Come on. Do as you told, solder. Might be enough there for so as it don't, don't suck up. Alright, well. Let's just drop a port on anyway, and then I'm going to keep it moving. The airflow, that is. So as I don't melt the port. Press and hold, and move it away. Let's just test these pins. But that should be good. Solid. Absolutely solid. Right, okay. Let's just give the USB-C chip a test quickly because a bad charge port could be skewing the results. Very rare, but it's possible. So these two pins were short. And they're still short. All right, still short. So the chip's got to come off. Can't be bothered to move the board. So I'll do it from this side. There's the old chip. Let's have a new one. And y'all have never seen it done like this. This is the proper reflow method. There you go. Get a blue screen from floating the APU. No. I'm at 440 degrees Celsius, mate. 40% airflow. Sizzle, sizzle. So that method I've used there is probably one of the safest ways to do it. Because you're not putting heat directly on the small components um, around M92. You're also not putting any direct heat on the RAM, and you're also not putting any direct heat on the chip. So, yeah, it's probably the safest way to do it, to be honest. It's certainly not the easiest. I'm just going to clean out the port while I'm here. Make sure there's no flux inside. But it's certainly not the easiest um, method to use. Ow, wow, 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 cha. Already very hot. Beautiful, mate. That looks absolutely perfect. Why from underneath? Just to show people different methods, mate. But, uh, yeah. Just look at the... Look at the joints it leaves behind. Then you'll understand why. Sweet. Cool. Focus, you prick. Don't know where that bit of fluff came from. Right, let's test those caps again in diode mode. There we go. That's a normal reading. Ha! <laughs> 
from Eugene. <laughs> yeah, it's a switch. There you go. Cool. Right. Well, I'm fairly confident that this is going to work now. Well, that piece of plastic didn't survive, unfortunately. I'll try and leave it there just so it looks okay, but it's probably not going to. Never mind. Not really a lot you can do about that when they get damaged. Whoa! Right, unfortunately, my internet has completely gone down. So I was live streaming this, but it looks like I'm finishing this up on video. And uh, yeah, kind of sucks, but it is what it is. So yeah, to all of those that was watching the live stream while I was repairing this, I am very sorry. But unfortunately, my internet is 100% down. If the pod's gone red, the internet's dead, unfortunately. So sorry to everyone that was watching the stream, but let's get this tested. So that's all screwed back together. I'm not gonna put the back plate on. Let's just test the charger and see what happens. So we was getting 0.9 amps. And there's that charging symbol. There we go. Pod's still red. So we're still dead. Well, I think there's a bit of flux in the port. Clean out the cable and then that in turn should clean out the port. Okay, we're getting 0.15 amps. 0.13 amps, sorry, 15 volts. Yep, and it's no longer flickering. Okay, cool. So, yeah, there was a little bit of flux in the port, but that's fine. And it's charging the other side. Awesome. So, that is charging now. So, I'm going to get this put back together fully because I'm expecting the rest of it to work now. And while it's doing that, it'll charge up a little bit. And uh, maybe not. Oh, I forgot to put the heat sink on. Whoops. Let's not do that. Put a bit of thermal paste on. Not sure where my MX4 has gone. So, damn it, I still forgot to put the heat sink on. So I'll put Soy 157 on, which is actually better. It's 15.7 uh, watts per meter Kelvin as opposed to 8. So it's actually better than MX4. Shouldn't be using that on a Nintendo Switch. It's way too overkill. A little bit annoyed that the internet has gone down. It's still offline, that sucks. So I guess it's early night for me, which is good. Just clean off a bit of that dust there. There we go. Okay, we've just bumped up to 0.22 amps at 15 volts. That's a little over a watt. So the reason it does that, by the way, while I'm just putting this back together, the reason it does that is because it needs to, well, it doesn't need to, but it does trickle charge slightly when the battery is completely dead. And the reason it does that is just to protect the battery. It's rather annoying because it takes forever to charge or to start charging properly. So during that trickle st trickle charge stage, it's it's literally putting minimal amounts of juice in, and it takes forever. Sometimes it can take up to half an hour just to start charging at 0.48 amps, which is normal slow charging current. So it can be rather annoying at times, but then other times it'll charge nice and quick. Right there we go. So that's still trickle charging at the minute. So what I'll do. I'll let that charge and uh, I'll pause the video until it's ready to turn on. Right, okay, this is turned on. There we go, boom. So I was actually just editing the video, I was going to throw it up on YouTube now just so people who were watching the stream could watch it, but yeah, there we go. Awesome, okay. So let's just use the customer's accessories. So I'm going to inspect the charger underneath the scope. I don't usually do this. Dock's in not very good condition. Oh look, is that already linked? No, it's dead. Never mind. Ding. Ding. 
All right, let's just see if it picks up. <laughs> My internet's just come back up. Check this out. <laughs> I'm not going back live now. It's 20 to 1 in the morning. Never mind. Right, okay. So, yeah, that's charging. It's drawing one amp. It's charging both sides of the port. The Joy Cons are working. And everything seems fine. Let's inspect this under the scope quickly. So, we got sent with the dock. And that dock looks absolutely fine. Looks nice and clean. And the charge port looks okay as well. Okay, cool. Right, so that appears to be working absolutely fine. Um, again, my apologies to the people who ended up being kicked off, kicked off a live stream. Uh, it is what it is. The internet went down for about 20 minutes, half an hour. Nothing I can do. But uh, yeah, the device is working. I'm happy and I'm sure the customer will be happy as well. So that's going to be it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. If you do have any comments or questions, leave them down in the comment section down below. I'll do my best to answer. If you do want to organise a repair, you can do so by heading over to the website. Link in the video description, consolefix.co.uk. And you can book in the repair there or you can get in touch if you've got a question about the repair. If you need some help with the repair that you're attempting yourself, head over to Discord. There'll be a link in the video description to Discord as well. So head over there and you can ask the community, including myself. I'm very active on there myself as well. So feel free to head over there and ask away if you've got some questions that you need answering about a repair that you're attempting. If you do want to support me, you can head over to Twitch and become a Twitch Prime subscriber by linking your Amazon Prime account to Twitch and then subscribing to my channel, which is free for you to do. It doesn't cost you a penny if you're already paying for Prime, but it does massively help out the channel. So that's going to be it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And until next time, I'll see you later. Bye for now.